Welcome back to The Vocalist. Today, I am hearing the band Ghost for the first time, so we're starting with a live performance of the song Mary on a Cross. Here we go. There's a song that my papa used to sing, actually. You might like this one. I know I've heard that chorus before. I don't know if it was on social media, in a movie, or it was the actual song. So I had to look it up to see, is this a cover? No, like this band has been around for quite some time. So there's a part of me that's just really excited to kind of do a deep dive now and learn more about them. But at the same time, I want to focus on the vocals and some really cool sounds that were happening. Uh, let me go back to the beginning. When I hear, you know, rock band and I see the makeup and the costumes and everything, I was expecting a very dark, mysterious, brooding voice to come out of this person. And it was so cool to hear the brightness and um, I want to say youthfulness, but if they've been around for as long as they have, I would imagine, you know, not in his 20s. So it just had this really... I don't know, effervescent quality, this really youthful quality, even if the singer isn't super young. But you know, what is age? Who is young? <laughs> um, we're going back to the beginning. Uh, here we go. There's a song that my papa used to sing, actually. It's, it's a little ominous, a little eerie. Something that I would imagine hearing on or in some sort of horror film with a clown face. It's got that bright, eerie quality to it. There's a song that my papa used to sing, actually. You might like this one. loved this intro so much. Again, I I didn't realize that I was going to recognize part of the song later, later on. The It's got this awesome techno psychedelic feel, but it also has that sort of ominous organ sound that you would expect in a scary movie or in a performance. Uh, so the two combined, I thought I thought that was just brilliant. Gorgeous, gorgeous space. So we've got a lot of forward placement. Actually, 
Maybe not a lot because his voice, well, I am going to say a lot. I feel that there's a lot of forward placement, both in his singing voice and in his speaking voice. Um, but we also get so much space. Like when he has these wider vowels, they're so wide and so open. As he ascends, we get a bit more texture, which we've talked about, you know, the chords naturally separate a little bit as you ascend. So just embracing that texture, I think is a very cool choice. Um, there was one other thing. But even, yeah, high again, it's, it's such a beautiful, pingy, bright sound. I. I am. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time reconciling his voice with what I'm hearing in the music because for some reason I just I thought it was going to be so much darker and this is just such a cool sound because it's not. his stage presence so much. There is this stoic calm, but it's so powerful and so confident. And I just, mm, it's, I can't even, I'm going to have to look up so many live performances. Do they always, or does he always have this sort of face covering or do you ever see, I don't know if previously he put makeup on his actual face or if they've always had these sort of masks or I don't know if they're like prosthetics. I don't know what it is. So you don't see a lot of movement in his face, but in his body, you can see just control. You can see engagement. You can see energy, um, but it's all very cool, uh, for lack of a better word. Here we go. Oh, that was such a great example. So when you, um, oftentimes when you start projecting more, when you start coming from a slightly more shouty or yelling place, um, it's a lot easier for us to support a little lower and like in the abdomen. And then it also, it's just easier to find more open pharyngeal space. So a little bit more back space. And so when he incorporated that speaking moment, and then shifted into singing, you could hear that backspace was a little bit more prominent than we had heard previously.
that's a good I can't I don't know mm. I can't tell if he just doesn't open his mouth very wide or if mm, let me play this again I just want to try and catch his face a little bit more It might just be like a very small prosthetic. Oh, I'm so curious. I'm gonna be going down the rabbit hole with this one. actually go back oh there's mm. um I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it that sort of sinister sound came back I love that and then toward the end here we got such a full boomy present sound the contrast was incredible um let's try it. that oh let me back it up into that okay We get a little bit more fry, a little, I don't know that it's necessarily nasality, but it does feel forward again. I'm actually going to suggest it's not nasality because it feels like there's so much space in his mouth, which is why I think the soft palate is lifted, which prevents a lot of sound from coming through the nose. Just a I'm sorry, I was gonna pause it and then I wasn't. I wanna hear that again. When he goes to sing it, it's just so full and so boomy. That's that sinister sound again, especially on choose to run. That is that gorgeous, full, tall sound. Oh my goodness. Mm. 
the slide. Oh, I love a good slide. But the advantage technically to a slide is you are enabling that stretch to happen gradually in your chords instead of just bloop, trying to get there really fast. Where this is in his voice, I wouldn't be concerned that we were going to hear any sort of yodel or flip. But in general, as a singer, when you've got Mm, when you have a certain objective for your sound and you want that fullness and you want to carry some of that that chest sound up higher sliding is your best friend it can also reveal some vulnerabilities but at least then you know and you can work through it and i it just also sounds so mm, like magnificent really like back to his stage presence and that sort of powerful persona that I'm getting that I feel like they pair so beautifully the personality we got at the end. His speaking voice in that moment reminded me a little bit of Jeremy Irons, especially when he voiced Scar in The Lion King. But that, yeah, that nice textured fry yet slightly ominous sound I thought was really cool. And also hearing that, it's fun to know that he can do the complete opposite. And we heard that in this song. Again, just just that chorus. I know I've heard it before. Uh, so I've got some research to do to see where I heard that. Um, and I need to get the whole history of this band so that I can put all the pieces together. But that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for this recommendation and for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.